Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hi again, everybody. Thanks for joining us on Celebrating Act 2. I'm John Coleman with my co-founder for Celebrating Act 2, Art Kirsch, and our special guest today, again, the galloping, not the galloping, the virtual gourmet, John Mariani. John, welcome. Good John. morning. Hey, I have a question, and uh, we tried to keep this uh, uh, non-seasonal, although we are taping this during the summer, and out here on the West Coast, it's been brutally hot. Yeah. And, uh, but, but it does uh, uh, bring up the question, to chill or not to chill? That's the question, <laughs> I would think. Um, and or why don't we limit it to wines? Are there rules about chilling and not chilling wines? Rules I hate when it comes to wines, but uh, preferences and common sense should rule. Um, with regard to wine, uh, which is to say that not every wine should be chilled, obviously, and red wines tend not to be chilled, but that's not entirely true, as we shall get into uh, here, and uh, then other wines uh, lose flavor if you chill them too much, so let's get down into it. Ooh, good, good. Are we, are we <laughs> chilling yet? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's take the two main categories, white and red, and rosé also, okay? And let's go back before we had refrigeration, uh, or you could stick it into the the, uh, the ice bucket, even though they didn't have ice. But cool wines were always, always, in, in Europe, um, appreciated because, especially in hot weather, but they're just a very pleasant thing to drink a cool drink. Now, they didn't have central heating in most of Europe till after World War II. They had, those who had houses had cellars, okay, which tended to keep things cooler. But I've been down cellars in Ireland, other places where it was red hot down there. I mean, you, you really have to cool it off with air conditioning and so forth. But when they talk about cellar temperature, serve the wine at room temperature, they say room temperature, okay? Well, basically, that means cellar temperature in a really good chateau that has caves that where it never, ever goes above 55 degrees without refrigeration. Um, it's always the same down there. It has good humidity. You can see the moss growing on the, on the uh, walls. But when you're talking about room temperature and you live in an apartment where the landlord keeps it year-round at 78 degrees, or at uh, 43 degrees, which doesn't happen even in America, <clears throat> or at the moment, you guys out there on the West Coast, going 101, 105, 110, um, room temperature is preposterous. So let's set a small goal for red wines to be 55 degrees Fahrenheit. If you get to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, no big deal. 65 degrees Fahrenheit, even 70 degrees Fahrenheit, the wine's still going to be very good and very tasty. But above that, it's going to taste a little flabby. And it's, it's a warm beverage at that point. I mean, let's face it, drinking warm wine. You know, even Guinness is chilled to a certain extent. Um, so 55 would be ideal if you could maintain that. Or even, let's say it's a hot day, uh, and I do this all the time, I take a red wine um, that is clearly room temperature. I keep it around 73, 74 in my house with air conditioning. Um, I don't want to drink a 73-degree uh, wine, so I will stick it either in the ice box for 15, 20 minutes or in an ice bucket for the same amount of time, and by then it'll come out to be 55 degrees. You can't go crazy about this. Okay, white wines and rosés. Um, white wines are traditionally, for good reason, served chilled uh, um, because they're supposed to be very refreshing and because they do not have the body of red wines. So to chill a bottle of Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, Gewürz um is a good idea. But going back to Europe, they didn't have refrigeration, okay? 
So they would drink it at 55 degrees would be what they could afford to drink it at unless they had access to um, uh, ice in winter when they didn't drink much in the way of uh, white wines, unless they're from Alsace or, or Germany where they produce predominantly white wines. <clears throat> but in the 20th century, let's say the 19th century, when ice started to be available and refrigeration started to be available, um, uh, then it made sense to bring that down um, for a optimum. I would say the optimum you would want your white wines at is about 45 degrees. Okay, you don't want them down on the chilly 30 degree cat cat um, uh, standard because then <clears throat> cold makes uh, takes away flavors. Okay, it blunts flavors. And same with ice cream. If you have like rock hard ice cream, you know, with stuff out of the supermarket, it doesn't taste like much until you let it melt a bit. Right? Uh, it's the same with white wines. The flavors of white wines will reveal themselves best when they're a little cool and refreshing, but have not yet got to the point where the chill is taking away the flavors. And the same for rosé wines. Um, so those are the two basic, um, I, again, I don't call them rules, but those are the two basic suggestions about wines. Now, what about um, port? Well, port is a red wine. It's a fortified red wine. And um, <clears throat> that is usually drunk as any red wine would be. Uh, sherry, fino sherries are very often chilled. And if you get to sauterne, then you want it uh, cold, because it's a very big, sugary, uh, very, very sweet wine from residual sugar, and the um, very eccentric, highly eccentric um, Baron uh, Rothschild, uh, he was very eccentric, he liked things. He said, when eating foie gras, the recommendation is you drink a nice sweet sauterne with it, because the foie gras is fatty and the sauterne is very, very sweet. They kind of meet each other in the middle. He says, no. The only sauterne is uh, Chateau de Chem that I drink, and I stick it in the freezer until ice crystals form. And then I take it out and I drink it with the foie gras, um, which I've never uh, had, but uh, it makes a certain kind of sensory sense, um, I think, when you're dealing with the warm foie gras even or the pate, which is so abundant with fat that this sweetness um, would maybe clash unless you get that extra tactile sensation like pop rocks of the uh, uh, the ice crystals in the uh, Chateau Ichem. So there's, uh, for those who can afford Chateau Ichem, which is probably about 300 bucks a bottle, that's what you do. I, I don't think I have to worry about that. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> so basically, you're, you're saying that if the temperature of a wine red or white, is too warm or too cold, it's, it affects the flavor of the wine. It's you the just drink and you just have a hot drink or a cold drink. It's the Goldilocks oatmeal principle, yes. Yeah. Hmm. So, and that's why room temperature is so commonly ascribed. You yeah. know. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. What, what, What's what, a room? Right. Your room versus mine. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting stuff. Most, uh, I think most Americans, whether they have air conditioning or, or heating in their house, uh, which I believe most of us do, um, you know, most people during a really hot uh, time of summer like this, and you guys in California, the uh, public service commission or whatever, Con Ed says, please cooperate. Put your thermostat at 75, 76. Okay? Right. Um, and, 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 and if you want to save oil or gas in the winter, I mean, around here, we keep our house at 68 degrees in the winter, you know, and uh, that's fine for a red wine, but um, no, you, you can even stick it outside on your, on your stoop for 10 minutes and it's gonna come down to 55. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess it, it does also come down to uh, particular your particular taste, if you like your wine cold versus oh, sure. room temperature. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, a lot of people, um, just as a matter of course, because they like, like ice in all their drinks, put mm. ice cubes in their wine. Um, I think that's kind of silly because it's diluting the wine to a certain extent. But really, if I have, I'm drinking a big red wine and it's just too warm 
or I've been or out with that wine on the patio or in the backyard where it's been 82 degrees after a while. Oh, you know, this wine's getting warm. I will plop a small half an ice cube in there and swirl it around. It's not going to yeah. ruin anything. And yeah. as for the white wines, well, the same thing pretty much applies. You're, you're not really diluting it by much unless you put three or four ice cubes in. Well, so sure. I, I think that the big takeaway here is that um, it's really cool to chill out with some wine, but <laughs> maybe not he... too cold. <laughs> Who scripts those lines, John or you, Art? <laughs> Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.